Let's discuss this with defense attorney Shan Wu and former federal prosecutor Renato Mariotti. Both are CNN legal analysts. Happy Labor Day. It's great to have both of you here. Okay, Shan, let's remind people. So George Papadopoulos is saying that he made this pitch um, that Trump should meet with Putin and that Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump were receptive and supported the, that idea. Now, let's remind people what Jeff Sessions said in his sworn testimony. Here's that moment. Yes or no? After the March 31st meeting, did you take any steps to prevent Trump campaign officials, advisors, or employees from further outreach to the Russians? Mr. Nadler, that, let me just say it this way. I pushed back at that. You made statements that he did, in, in fact, at the meeting, I pushed back. Okay, Shan, what does it matter if Jeff Sessions supported the idea of meeting with Trump? Is that illegal? I mean, of Trump meeting with Putin. Uh, not necessarily illegal, although it certainly calls into question again, why wouldn't they report that idea if it come up? But what's really troubling for Sessions is that this is a contradiction of his sworn testimony, and it completely undercuts any notion that he should not have recused himself. I mean, it puts him front and square <laughs> in the targets of the investigation. Frankly, he might need to lawyer up himself at this point. <laughs> but on the flip side, Renato, um, George Papadopoulos has pleaded guilty to lying to investigators. Why do we believe him now in this instance? Well, you know, it's it's certainly an issue. It's going to call into question his credibility. Uh, I think part of the reason that Papadopoulos put this in his sentencing memorandum is to, to suggest to the judge that, hey, the attorney general of the United States lied to Congress. So, um, you know, take take my sentence with a grain of salt. In other words, when you sentence me, keep in mind that I'm not the only one lying uh, about this investigation. It does sound like that's what he's trying to do. But, Renato, what do you think? Is it, does it change something if Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump were open to the idea of sitting down with Vladimir Putin? It suggests that they they were more interested in developing a relationship with Russia than other administrations had been. And it really what I think the, the question for me would just be, why hide it? In other words, why wouldn't Jeff Sessions just say to Congress, sure, I was open to the idea. We were open to the idea of meeting with the Russians. You know, that that's what I think is the bigger question for me rather than the, the fact that they wanted to meet in the first place. Okay. Understood. And so, Shannon, George Papadopoulos will be sentenced on September 7th, so this week, and he wants probation. Right. So is this just a maneuver to either say, I have more information, or look, everybody's lying and you should treat me with kid gloves on someone? A little bit of both. Um, I think it's interesting, you know, for people who cooperate, there's like a slow transformation period where they start off maybe aggressively denying it. He made a big mistake going in originally without counsel, and <clears throat> they didn't turn him around until later. So he's really trying to come clean at this point, and that's why at this point his credibility is probably much higher than it used to be because <laughs> he knows it's on the line now for sentencing. And so I would believe him over Sessions at this point. Okay. Um, next topic. The New York Times uh, is reporting, Renato, that Bruce Orr, and people will recognize that name because he is a longtime uh, Department of Justice official, and he has become the latest target of President Trump, who wants his security clearance revoked. So he and Christopher Steele, apparently, were very involved in trying to turn Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska into becoming an informant for the U.S., an FBI informant. And uh, Deripaska was connected to Paul Manafort. Tell us what the the problem is with this. Isn't this what investigators do? They try to find someone in the inside in Russia who they could use to their benefit. I think that's exactly what our counterintelligence people in the United States do. We have a lot of brave men and women who work very hard to try to um, develop information on our adversaries and, and work to um, get, get sources uh, of information for our government so that we know exactly what our adversaries are doing. I think, to me, what's most interesting about this news is that this occurred from the in the 2014 to 2016 time period where you had Orr and Steele working together on this. I think what it really shows is 
their anti-Russian efforts, their efforts to, uh, you know, infiltrate an adversary on behalf of the United States occurred well before Donald Trump was president. Uh, you know, they actually started before he was even a candidate. And so really what it suggests to me is that their efforts uh, to try to penetrate this adversary have nothing to do with Donald Trump, but have to do with uh, protecting our country. Well, obviously, that's not how Donald Trump sees it, Sean. And so the way that he sees it is that Bruce Orr's wife, Nellie, worked for Fusion GPS, okay, which was the, you know, um, firm that was tasked with trying to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. So he sees that as scandalous. And should we see it that way? I don't think we should see it scandalous, but I, I think um, I, I agree with Renato. It's important how long they've been working on the case already. I think the problem now politically is with these leaks that have come forward, the motivation of the leakers, they're, they're being very candid. I mean, they're concerned about the national security implications of the leak, but they also seem concerned with making sure that Trump doesn't play to his political advantage. Conversely, that plays right into his hands to say, well, they're thinking about politics. That's why they're leaking this. The Orr situation, very curious situation. I mean, clearly, some analysts like myself had said previously, there's no way these were just social occasions he was having with Steele. You don't get debriefed by the FBI after you have lunch with your friends. And is it strange that he was meeting with Steele? In context now, no. It seems like part of an actual ongoing investigation. Initially, when it sounded like sort of a social thing, then he gets debriefed, that did not add up. <laughs> okay, but you're saying that this New York Times thing actually goes further to explaining what the relationship was. Absolutely, it does. Very helpful. Uh, Shamu, Renato Mariotti, thank you both very much. Yeah. And thank you.